Good morning. This is the beginning of the third week of Easter time, and the Mass will be sung this morning in Gregorian chant. The opening introit translates, Sing with joy to God all the earth, Alleluia. Sing a psalm to his name, Alleluia. Give glory to his praise, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, in order to uh, suitably celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The, auth the author of life you put to death but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand, through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wept away. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your face shine upon us. Lord, let your face shine upon us. When I call, answer me, O oh my just God. You who relieve me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine upon us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. Lord, let your face shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine upon
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. They were still speaking about this. He stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. As we know, in the celebration of the Eucharist, bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Through the power of the Holy Spirit and in in the instrumentality of his priest. The risen Christ glorified is truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity, under the appearance of bread and wine. In a lecture to the Eucharistic Congress in Benevento 20 years ago, Pope Benedict XVI spoke of the Holy Eucharist as a process of five transformations, the transubstantiation itself being the central event in the series of five, two leading up to it and two following it. 
In this way, he described the Eucharist within a vast context, reaching all the way from the eternal divinity of God down to the here and now of our lives and beyond to the consummation of history. During this time between Easter and Pentecost, the Church encourages us to deepen our understanding of the Eucharistic mystery. In order to do this, I would like to consider each of these transformations individually, each having an important lesson for us. About a year before he died, our Lord promised to give us the Holy Eucharist. The fulfillment of this promise, of course, took place at the Last Supper. The event is described in the words you'll recognize when you hear me pray them at the consecration of Mass today. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. What Jesus, do, what Jesus is doing in these words is called, of course, the transubstantiation, the act by which Jesus, respecting the order of creation, but Lord of its laws, transforms the substance, though not the appearance, of bread and wine into his real presence. In his own words, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. The sacrament of the Eucharist is the source and summit of our Christian life, <clears throat> by which we're prepared for our resurrection, or rather, which makes it already begin for us right now. I'll say more of on this when we come to the third of these transformations. So the first of the five Eucharistic transformations described by Pope Benedict is that of violence transformed into an act of love. In truth, Jesus was killed. He was tortured to death by being nailed to a cross, letting human sin work out the whole unimaginable brutality of its anti-divine fury on him. By freely accepting to undergo these appalling acts, Jesus transformed them from within. The acts of violence against man, violent men against him became, through his response, an act of unfathomable love offered for the expiation of our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the entire world. He did not offer violence against violence. His example shaped a fundamental act of transformation for us to follow, a courageous answer of love in response to violence. The second transformation associated with the Eucharist is that of death transformed into life. The first transformation of violence into love is now contained in the broader transformation of death into life. Christ who died rose to new life, transforming death itself into an overwhelming miracle. We celebrate in this season the resurrection which shows love to be stronger not only than violence, but even death. With this cross and resurrection, Jesus, the author of life, carried us all through the darkness of death to the light of life, through the chill of death to the warmth of human dignity, through the fear of death to the love of God, for repentance, for the forgiveness of sins, so the re that the repentance, for the forgiveness of sins, would be preached in his name to all nations. By virtue of our baptism, we are called to share in this great work through both our actions and words. 
The third transformation in the process is when bread and wine are transformed into the Lord's body and blood. This is the transubstantiation, which has always rep represented a kind of continental divide, becoming for some a stumbling block to faith, and for others who, recognizing him in the breaking of bread, perceive the most compelling evidence for the reality of God's love. In his words of consecration, Christ does not just say, this is my body. He says, this is my body which is given for you. He offers himself to us as a gift. We observe the same thing in his words over the cup. He does not just say, this is my blood, but rather, this is my blood which is shed for you. It's shed for us. That means is shed as a gift. Gifts communicate. The shedding, the gift of his body and blood, by being given, like all gifts, becomes capable of communicating. We communicate usually with words in order to convey information to someone else. When Jesus, the Word of God, communicates, something far more radical happens, and that's because God's Word is always creative. When he speaks, his words actually make something new come into being. In the book of Genesis, remember, we read, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. He said, It was. In exactly the same way, Jesus, who could make stones into bread and water into wine, changes bread and wine into his flesh and blood given for us. The, the fourth transformation of, say, Father, of Pope Benedict is in receiving Holy Communion, we become transformed into members of Christ's mystical body. Completing what was begun in our baptism, we are now fully united in one single self-giving organism, the Church. Just as Jesus received from his Father the power to share with us his body and blood, so his presence within us enables us, through selfless charity and love, to contribute to the salvation of others, to be agents of transformation in ways far beyond our human capacities. In truth, it's not primarily us who receives him, but he who receives us, drawing us into the bottomless depth of his own love. It's called Holy Communion because by it we are united to Christ and to each other. Conformed to him, we are no longer alone and separate. The unity of Christ, head and body, changes how we look at each other. Through us, the love within the Church should overflow to all mankind, even to enemies of the faith. As it does, it transforms the old view of individual merit into a network of love. Since we are all united to Christ, it's no longer we who perform acts of charity, but Christ who lives in us. The love that springs from the Eucharist calls us to sacrifice and works that make our world more civilized and humane. It also calls us to intercede for others, both for our brethren in the faith and for all of mankind. Finally, the fifth Eucharistic transformation is that of all creation transformed into a dwelling place for God. In today's gospel, we hear how Jesus stood among his disciples and said, Look at my hands and feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. There is no farewell here to material existence. He's risen in his bodily fullness, and in him, our human nature, body and soul, is restored to its original dignity and has received the hope of rising again with him. The world is not just an illusion from which we hope to slip away, nor is it an endless wheel of suffering from which we desperately try to escape. Indeed, all of creation, ourselves included, with all the problems that overshadow it, is meant to be transformed into the dwelling place of God, 
conformed perfectly to the Eucharist. The liturgy of the Eucharist consists precisely in Jesus' bestowal of his sacrifice upon us in order that we may in turn offer it to others as our own. We are not expected to simply convey a message. <clears throat> United in his <clears throat> humanity and participating in his divinity, we're uniquely capable, if we will, of drawing others into full participation in the Eucharistic mystery. In the liturgy, our contribution consists of preparing the gifts of bread and wine in expectation and hope of the Lord's divine act of consecration. In like manner, let us pray that he'll consecrate both ourselves and our efforts to establish a full correspondence between heaven and earth, thus preparing for a new heaven and earth where God will be all in all. Let us stand and recite the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Trusting in the power of the risen Christ, let us bring our needs and prayers to God today. For church leaders, may the Lord guide them in caring for the physical, spiritual, and emotional needs of those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. For civic leaders throughout the world, may the Lord grant them fortitude in defending the dignity and sanctity of life. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are struggling in their faith, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit and find meaning through God's mercy and love in the knowledge of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For all gathered here at Portsmouth Abbey and Portsmouth Abbey School, may the Spirit renew us in the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in Christ, marked with the sign of faith, may they rejoice forever with him in his glory and come to share in the fullness of eternal life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. For permanent and transitional deacons and consecrated religious men and women everywhere, that they may continue to flourish in the church and be a special witness by their lives to the power of the gospel in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy and hope, we trust in your love and seek your strength in all we do. 
Receive these prayers and petitions we offer you today through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. <clears throat> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together in an ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Oh, uh-huh. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered in your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, which will be the blood, of new, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for you many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, save you of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have saved us. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gregory the Great, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing God. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own, listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, who gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. May we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom may bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, but you should enter into my room. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I don't know where the challenges are.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant us, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorrupted glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.